Good morning, everybody. You guys there? What <laughs> is there? Yeah, the baby was wandering about here. Then we're so a little while ago. Both the babies went to bed. Now you guys here, and of course, of course, as soon as I start filming, she gets up. Boop, 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 boop. Uh, it was an okay night, I guess. I had a dream. I didn't write it down at the time. I don't think there were any serial killers in it, so you know, I guess it was an okay dream. And uh, just processing all the, all the stuff yesterday and the kind of thing with my friend. And I don't know if I came to do this. I, you know, I kind of, you know, I kind of find it odd having friends, you know. So anyway, but, uh, but that whole, uh, I don't know, I guess, um, I guess she was trying to help, but I just, I, uh, I don't know, I'm, I mean, I'm just, I'm not sure where I am now, but I'm exploring it. And, uh, and I rambled, 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 and then posted it, you know, and, uh, but I didn't send it to anyone. I think I still got, like, four views. I don't know who those four, four people are, <laughs> you know, that I kind of accidentally found. And I don't, you know, when it says it just got a view, it means somebody's watched 30 seconds of it. So out of that 50 minute thing, I think, you know, three or four people saw maybe 35, 40 seconds and, and, and switched because, you know, I don't think anybody's really going to want to watch that. Anyway, uh, today, I want to create some writing. I might have to go get some cat food. And then, um, do some writing. i got to get back to that other one because, you know, what I talk about in the podcast has to be you know, somewhat, at least somewhat, you know, veiled. You know, I'm probably talking uh, providing more details than I ever used to, but uh, I'm still at this point not willing to reveal too much because of the, you know, personal nature of it and the legalities and other people being involved and all of that stuff. Of course, um, one of the babies came up on the bed, Agitha hissed at him and jumped off. So she's still herself, nothing to worry about. <laughs> Everything's still normal here. So now Agitha's back on her perch, and the babies are just running around. Here, one baby there, one baby there. Anyway, gonna call my parents. Bye for now. Ah, finally found a flavor that Elsie likes. <laughs> Seems to like. I think it's a chicken uh, blue pate or something. And uh, I guess it seems to like it too. So everybody seems to be enjoying their, their breakfast. Now I'm gonna have my breakfast. Yay. I don't know how stale this one is. It's pretty stale. I think I can find something here. Now, um, uh, I had a very nice conversation with my father, just, you know, said everything's fine, you know. <laughs> Talked about the house, and it's completing, and about the cats, and about things over there, and, you know, uh, the, all of that stuff, and everything was okay. Uh, I don't know, and obviously I will not tell him, I would not tell him what to say, you know, that I'm being struggling with pretty severe addictions, and, you know, that I've kind of gone crazy. I think it's probably better not to mention it to my father, you know, so, you know. But you know what? Well, in a way, when I said everything is fine to him, it sort of is. I mean, you know, I've I've been on my journey, journey I needed to go on, and I'm I'm at a place where I think I needed to be, and where it's going to go, I don't know. But I'm not. Uh, I'm kind of. I, I I know that I I'm on my my path. Not a path that somebody else wants me to take. And, and I've been, you know, a so long time ago, I, 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 I chose my own path, not particularly the ones that my parents wanted me to take. He did not get married. He didn't have kids. And, you know, it's not a, uh, you know, uh, and uh, I did not stick to teaching. And even, you know, they never really wanted me to go into teaching in the first place. I mean, the ideal, obviously, I mean, the goal was for me to become a medical doctor. That's the usual, you know, not, not a PhD, a real doctor. It's been seven years um, having, you know, some thoughts about this latest situation and where I am and, you know, the, the so-called sweethearts. Is this really necessary? Well, sure, if, if, if you want to do something, you want to keep busy, this is productive, fine. Fine, you know. I do know that you need uh, you need some activities. Uh, so if if you're knocking everything off the uh, the counter, uh. okay. The babies have been engaged in creative play, which is uh, daddy's quite uh, happy with. And then uh, you get this there, you know, napping. I'm having a very nutritious breakfast of um, ghost pepper jelly and um, cheeses, and a couple of tiny tomatoes and uh, and rusks. 
So, I just got a couple of thoughts and I, I just want to quickly articulate them before I lose them because, you know, um, in terms of the addiction, the whole so-called addiction, and this is where I'm at now and I'm not recommending this for anyone else and I'm not saying it's working or doesn't working. I'm not working. That's not the whole, you know, the whole, the, as my friend was saying, you can't beat this. And, and I think that was on your own. You can't, you, what you've been doing hasn't been working. But I think that that was, to me, from where I am now, to me that was part of the problem. Part of the problem was I was seeing it as an addiction, as, you know, and the metaphors I was using, the possession and, the, you know, um, the returning to the ordinary world from the underworld. I think that those were not, those were that, that is what was not working for me. What was not working for me was was the the more traditional framework and the one that you know my, even though my analyst objects to my saying that you know he was pushing twelve steps he really did think that I couldn't do it on my own and he said that to me you know a couple of times that he's like going well if not twelve steps then you have to find something online you have to set up a support group you right now you only have me and my my former uh, student at the time uh, my former podcast producer he goes you're going to burn him out and he said you know you have to you know and he was very uh, he was very pleased about my having you know friends and you know and support group and that's the traditional way of looking at it you know but i'm like um you know we sort of you know but that's not that's not what brought me here what brought me here was the opposite what brought me here was going going all out just going you know now the twelve steppers would say, you know, you have to hit a wall. You have to, you know, and you know, and I went very far down, and I went to very dark places, and I went into things that, you know, again, consenting adults, all of that stuff, you know, um, you know, and uh, substances that may or may not be legal or illegal, yeah. But um, but I went into places and situations, and you know, that a lot of people would consider, you know, as being very, you know societally unacceptable, let's put it that way, you know? So I really, instead of trying to stop, I I speeded up and I went as far into shadow. And I when I get to a certain point, it's not that, you know, and people say you can stop when you want to stop. You know, I've been told this many times, that when you're ready to stop, when you choose to stop, it's up to you, it's under your power, it's your control, you can stop, you know? And... Um, it's not that easy because those metaphors I was using, to a certain degree, they do apply. Uh, you know, people who haven't experienced, quote, addiction, unquote, don't really understand the possessive nature of it. It is, it is like a possession. But, they said, uh, it's very hard to articulate this, but, you know, I do, the way I'm looking at it now is that I went to a certain place and I went I went very far if you want to like that uh, if you want to say it like that inwardly you know and down or up or wherever I went I went uh, I went very far from the norms of society or from the accepted norms of society so very very deep into shadow you know and um, with aid of substances and uh, you know uh, alternative lifestyles shall we say and um, and it's not that I hit bottom. That's not it, you know? Um, there was a shift. There was a, there was a, there was a, you know, I kind of came out the other side, as it were, you know? And I, I, I see now that my mistake, I think, was saying, and Burroughs once said something like that. If you say no to the cravings, it'll just increase them. Or, you know, you have to go through them. You have to become one with them. And, you know, it's kind of zeny thing, which, you know, I said easier said than done. And what I'm saying is not exactly that. What I'm saying, and this was very hard for my, my friend also to accept, you know, seeing it from the traditional framework, she was like, you know, you... You, you, know, you really think you can get out of this by yourself. What you've been doing so far hasn't been working. And it's been a battle and it's been a struggle and you've almost died. And, you know, the only way out is to, you know, seek help. That's the, uh, that's, that's the solution for everything. You can't do it yourself. Society's there. Yeah, um, there's a medical model. There's therapy. And, you know, you know, therapists, the, you know, the establishment knows best. And they will put you back on track. You know, you can't get there by yourself. You know, but uh, to get back onto the uh, on track, you know, 
Um, you know, therapy will do it. It's one of the reasons I cut my uh, ties with my analyst because you know, and I do think, like you know, one can. It's very, very difficult, but one can do it on one's own. You know, now whatever it is, you know, whatever working is, you know. But for me, I feel that I am where I want to be. You know, and where I want to be is not to say that what I was doing is bad even though it could be seen as bad for me and, uh, you know, in terms of society's views. Um, so, um, but uh, rather than say what I was doing is bad and I was, you know, a terrible, terrible person and a junkie and, and I had these awful, awful cravings and, and now I've seen the light and, you know, and I will never do it again and, and uh, you know, 12 steppers praying to the higher power because they're so weak and uh, I'm like going... The where I am now, I'm like, like, I was where I needed to be. And I was communing with a very powerful energy because I needed to go there. I mean, I, I needed to explore that aspect of, you know, spirituality, which is really, really what it was. And, and myself, you know, um, Dionysus. I was praying at the altar of Dionysus, so to speak, you know. Even that's, that's, that's not a traditional religious thing. It's, it was it was the one. And, the, you know, it was actually, I think, Jung who said that the purpose of religion, is kind of misquoted, but uh, Jung who said that the purpose of religion was actually to prevent one from a direct encounter with the, uh, with the divine force, you know, which is where that kind of stuff sort of takes you, you know. Uh, and then the 12 steppers go, the only way out is to pray to the higher power because you're so weak to take away your cravings, to take away your desire for actual communion with it and actual knowledge, you know, and, and, uh, and, uh, and bring you back as a, a, you know, to, as a praying zombie, you know, that's a, so that you can fit better into society and, you know. Uh, so, no, you know. Um, what I'm saying now, and I'm, it's a little hard to articulate, but what I'm saying is that the way I'm seeing it now is that rather than say that the addiction was bad and even call it an addiction, and I kind of agree with that now, even though my friend said, you know, the, the people who are saying that to you are this bullshit, you know. It's an addiction if you see it as an addiction, you know. And I saw it as an addiction, and I was battling it, and I, you know, and I thought it was going to kill me, and which it may have. I mean, <laughs> I'm not entirely wrong on that, but uh, but uh, you know, um, but I I saw it as an addiction and something that I couldn't get out of, you know. And it's not a question of my choosing, but it's a question of having achieved what the addiction was there for, and being aware of that. That's the, that's the key in this, is that when you get to that point where, and the, I'm speaking only for myself, only for myself, I'm not for anyone else, but for me, when I got to the point where I accepted what I was calling an addiction as necessary and as a part of me, you know, as distasteful as it is to society and to myself, you know, as dangerous as it is, to myself, not to society. I was try. I was careful not to, you know, uh, do anything, you know, like drive uh, intoxicated or anything like that. So, so it, as, when I accepted that, when and that's that whole, you know, the shift that was a part of the. And I went through the emotions, and it was, you know, and I really appreciated my friends. I really appreciated my kids. What I was coming back for, and the essentials, and you know, I went a little crazy. But I embraced the crazy, and then I shifted into a different space and a different way of seeing it. And now, where I am is, and and I kind of see this is where I need to be. You know, that that what I was doing before wasn't working. You know, uh, and what I was doing before was seeing it as an addiction. That's the part that wasn't working. Oh, you know, BBs are playing the final chord. It's not as if there's no, you know, a shortage of cat toys in there. It's the final chord from something and they're playing with it. I mean, it's just a thread of some kind. And um, they came to watch, and, you know, this is a family in the morning, you know, so here I am. It's not ordinary world, it's not extraordinary world, it's the world, it's my world, you know. And this is, you know, and I could have, uh, do a morning entry and write and try to write and maybe go out to buy some cat food and, you know, and come back and uh, write and podcast and whatever. Just day by day. Bye for now. And I wrote another eight pages, nine pages, kind of, you know, just.
just exploring stuff that I'm holding back from podcasts, basically, you know, details and thoughts. Some of the thoughts, same thoughts that I had in the podcast, but just kind of exploring in a little bit more detail than I do that. Good morning, everybody, and uh, the kids are having their breakfast. Finally seem to have found uh, a flavor that uh, Elsie, I didn't have to coax him too much. Uh, he stepped away from his bowl for a minute, and I was like going, oh, you don't like it all that. And then he came back. So, so the kids are, uh, the babies are eating their wet, and uh, Gita is just finishing her wet. So everybody seemed to like this morning's uh, flavors. I think they were wilderness salmon and trout and pro clan tuna. Um, so, um, on the whole, a good night. Let's say one guy got Hello, everybody. I'm here at Everless Taka House again, and I just made it. Um, now, I'm not sure if there are one special ends at 3. It used to be at 4, and then I came once and I came at 3.30, and there's a note 3. But I think it's still 4, but it doesn't matter. I got here just at 3, and he said, yeah, I'm not sure. Well, fine. So, I'm getting two. I'm getting one uh, shrimp and one fish, and then whatever is left over, which hopefully will be quite a lot, I'll just have it packed, and that'll be my evening. Then I, I've taken care of lunch and dinner both. So, um, I taped a little bit at, at home when I showed the uh, the kids and feeding them uh, brunch. And, um, and then after that, I did make a morning entry. I replied to a friend, my out-of-province friend, and, uh, once again, I was uh, complaining a little bit about the whole rebound thing, but I know that she means really, really well, and I'm really, really glad, uh, glad to have her as a friend. And she, you know, my, my, my friends, all of them. But uh, the two cat rescuers in particular have really been there for me through this last transition or whatever it is I've been going through, you know. <laughs> so, um, you know, uh, I replied to her, then I did make a morning entry. Now, I had a dream, and uh, it, there was no serial killers in it. But there was, uh, was doing substances, and I even did. And somebody I knew from the past who didn't actually do heroin, did, uh, did another substance, yeah. she smoked, but um, it can a crystal form. But that one, um, um, in the dream, uh, I met her at, the, uh, at a condo that I used to own before, just down the road here, and uh, I ended up doing the big one with her, the H, uh, heroin, which I've never done. And I'm pretty sure the person that I was dreaming about has never done that one either. But uh, I did, uh, you know, and uh, I injected it, which I've also never done. I've never, done, I've never injected, you know. So, you know, <laughs> so I kind of, it is sort of, I don't know. My food has arrived, at least the shrimp one, and there's also a fish one. I'm thinking here right now. But there was somebody really losing it outside. And we were just screaming, screaming, screaming. We went down for a couple of minutes, but you don't hear it now. So anyway, um, <laughs> gonna have this. Uh, there's a second lunch coming to be packed. There's a sprinkle roll. This is a, this is a shrimp, um, chili shrimp with gravy. You know, got lots and lots of peppers here. Um, got uh, vegetable fried rice. And then for the other one, I'm getting um, uh, noodles. So anyway, bye for now. Hello everybody, I'm here back in the mini, and I got um, you know a second lunch uh, packed up. For dinner, <laughs> dinner as well. So now I don't have to worry about that, you know. And uh, it was kind of interesting. I just sat and ate, and you know, um, and the people at the table by the window they were talking very loudly. And if you're going to talk very loudly in public, you know, and uh, you know, uh, because I usually eat alone. Almost always. <laughs> okay, very rarely with a friend, you know. Uh, but um, I pretty much always eat alone and eat out often. So I do end up hearing, overhearing. I can't help it. I can't really close my ears. And for many years, I used to be like, you know, that used to be kind of interesting. I'd be sitting there kind of uh, vicariously <laughs> kind of, kind of <laughs> listening to other people's you know, stuff, you know, while I'm eating my own food, you know. And, uh, you know, I would sometimes mention something interesting in my own journal entries, which is for my own. Yes, I don't publish, no intention of publishing uh, journal entries, everything, everything that I experience, everything that I hear can potentially go into it, because it's my record of everything, you know? So, if I ever hear, uh, over here, I mean, not intentionally, but uh, if people are talking loud enough in public, um, and I hear something that I think is sort of interesting, I will uh, mention it, you know? So these people, they were just talking and talking and talking, and, you know, uh, I know that uh, they're, you know, they're, they're friends, and I know that she... Uh, really likes uh, TikTok and uh, watches a lot of TikTok, so I guess maybe that's her addiction. And she uh, she's going to offer meds 
And you know, it was kind of interesting that you said that because you know I've just been talking about that. You know, completely different circumstances and completely different. You know, <laughs> uh, um, I mean, uh, I, I think these people fit much, are much more part of the ordinary world. <laughs> they're not, you know, they're not rodent weasels. <laughs> they're like, uh, uh, you know, domestic cats or like um, more like dogs actually. Because we're talking about dog, and somebody's dog, I think it was a tenant's dog, is named after mozzarella sticks. So I think his name Mozzie. Oh shit! Talk away, talk away. They're really big into sports and the, something about the Habs, and I have no clue. No clue whether that is football, baseball, hockey, whatever. It could be anything. You know, I hate sports, but that's my that's my thing. I mean, everybody has their own thing, and I'm not going to judge them for being, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, sports fans. I'm not going to judge them. You know, <laughs> I I personally think it's a bit uh, detestable and you know, waste of time and effort and money and you know. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Back in Petsmart, I haven't been here for four or five days. That must show that things have been a little off for me, because I usually don't go for five days without coming to a Petsmart. But anyway, it's nice to be back, and, and I remember that I think Elsie liked the wilderness salmon flavor. And that wilderness happens to be on sale, but of course there's no salmon flavor left. I mean, obviously, that would be the one that's sold out. So, I've tried the different ones, this trout and this chicken and this all of that. And then I was looking for these toppers. Salmon toppers. I thought they were Purina. I remember the P-U-R part. But uh, then I'm looking everywhere and I can't find them. And then in the end I asked someone and she couldn't find them. Then I realized it's not Purina, it's Pure Bite. And it goes by the brand. That's the, he just came in the door and the baby came to investigate the, uh, the groceries. <laughs> that's, my, that's daddy's dinner, not yours. But there is, there is obviously, there is food for you, there are treats for you. When are they not? Daddy went to uh, Pittsburgh again today. And I get this there. You got her. No. Very sweet. I mean, you know. Somewhat social distancing queen and not the most social of cats, but very, very sweet. Now, you know, Lane tidied uh, maybe point one out of ten on the scale. So we get one baby there investigating and uh, having food. And we get a Githa here. In her bed, and she was watching even while I vacuumed in this room. And it, it's it, it's scoring a, a win because I did pick up all that stuff. I just kind of moved it up there. <laughs> you know, you know the, uh, the envelopes and things in the paper on the floor, rather than sorting them through, I just put them into a, a bag and stuffed them in there. So this is getting kind of out of hand again, you know. <laughs> and then, where's the other kid? The other baby is there, you know. They were a hiding spot during the cleaning. Now notice that the cushions are slightly like that, so they'd be tidied, you know. I didn't do anything with that because that's uh, Agitha's favorite, uh, say, uh, you know, one of her favorite sitting spots now. So I've got, I've kind of left that nest as it was. And, you know, I did vacuum, you know, and uh, I semi-tidied that, semi, you know. Uh, yeah, this, this is, yeah, one out of, I think it's just one out of ten. Now, yes, uh, I'm proceeding on the list. Now, uh, shower... Uh, journal entry, a little bit of writing if possible, and then uh, no, feeding the kids, Netflix, and I got all kinds of food for the kids. Anyway, uh, bye for now. Oh, there. Very, very nicely settled, ain't he? There. And then the other one is... And the kids kind of helped. Uh, moral support. Uh, there they are. Okay, bye for now. It's now a couple of hours later, and we've got the Akita settled there, and we get um, one of the babies here, and we've got the other baby is here. Very, very nicely settled in the black bed, but kind of, you know, camouflaged because he's black and the bed is black. So, you know, uh, I've just been sitting here. I've pretty much done most of the things on my list for today, including the tidying up and making a journal entry about the day's uh, events, spending time with the kids, kind of uh, processing, um, except for writing more in, in the Dionysus material. But then I did all the other stuff, and I um, done my journal, daily journal entries, and instead of doing that, I think you know the energy has gone more into this other stuff today, so um, I'm just going to tape a little bit more, and see if I can edit and post. And I'm going to do the same thing. Just going to post and not send the links to anyone. So if anyone finds it and wants to hear me rambling incoherently, that's fine. And if they don't, that's fine too. I'm doing it mainly for myself. And then that way also I can 
kind of see my own ideas progressing and my own thoughts and look back over the podcast and you know um so where we're at now and i'm not counting days if i had been counting days it would be something like nine days but i'm not counting days we're in a different space supposedly you know um so and i have been talking in the last podcast a little bit about the shift so rather than going clear this time i'm calling it the shift and this kind of a shift in, in uh, you know, in perception, a shift in quote awareness unquote, if you like, uh, a different a different way of viewing the uh, the addiction and the uh, quote addiction unquote, and where it took me, and where I am now. And as I said, there is little bits of um, a pull because uh, it's a pull to a very very powerful, you know. It's that Dionysian energy. That's the framework I'm using now. And um, particularly writing about it, particularly writing the details, which, you know, uh, has a kind of, you know. But uh, today I didn't do any actual writing about, uh, you know, uh, the latest, you know, connection with it or whatever you want to call it. And, uh, and um, the, uh, the addiction, if you, you know if you want to call it that, or whatever it is. So um, I'm just working in what's the neat latest, uh, you know. And as my friend from out of province said, you know, she does agree with my, you know, kind of finding my own way, you know, my own path, my own way out. But she does raise the question of, you know, long term. And that's the whole thing, you know. So for now, the framework I'm using, I, I'm not really considering the long term because I'm going, I'm the goal now is not, to uh, stay clear, you know, it is, I mean, it is sort of, the goal is actually, uh, at this point, to go moment by moment, and right now, the moment, uh, you, know, as, you know, as I'm progressing, there isn't a strong pull, because there has been a shift. Now, how long this will last, and I'm hoping that by shifting everything, you know, by, by seeing it now not as a, the goal to make 60 days, 70 days, 90 days, the goal is to stay in the here and now. And in this here and now, not to need, you know, uh, what before was giving me, um, was bringing me here, because I'm already here, if that makes any sense, you know. So since I'm here, so now what I need to do is, you know, uh, the, I still do want to stay clear, because, you know, that uh, the other, uh, where the, the uh, connections, the addiction, or whatever you want to call it, was taking me, was getting more and more dangerous. And it was getting harder and harder to come back. So now uh, I'm here. And, um, but uh, I've also said that the goal right now is not to make it clear forever and ever. If that happens, great. That's how, you know, if I don't need to go back there, great, you know. Uh, but, um, but for now, the goal, before when I was saying the goal is to make 95 days, make 100 days, to be clear forever, never, ever, ever do that shit again, uh, it was a pair of opposites. I would end up getting pulled back into it, you know, it was from here to there, here to there. So now I'm trying to do it another way. Let's see. I mean, in terms of long term, Let's see, you know, uh, let's see what, uh, how this goes. I'm, I'm basically, I didn't intend to do this. I did not intend to do this, but I'm kind of my own guinea pig now. I'm doing what I call self experiments. <laughs> um, this people have done before. Uh, people, you know, more, uh, you know, qualified to do it and write about it and talk about it than I am. You know, and the, even people like Timothy Leary experimented, but, you know, in control settings and the whole LSD and stuff. And the people have, there are people like um, uh, uh, Daniel Pinchbeck. He's written a, an interesting book called Breaking Open the Head. And he's the one who coined the term, I think, psychonauts. Um, so, but I'm not, mine is not exactly that. Mine is something a little different, you know? And uh, I had a, a, so what, what, the framework. What exactly, where exactly am I now? And that's what I want to focus on. Where am I now? What is the shift, you know? Um, if I still had my analyst, you would be asking me that, those questions. But now I have to ask, uh, ask them myself and work on them myself. So what, uh, what has been the shift? If there has been a shift, I think everyone's, everyone who's been watching this knows that there's been a shift. But what has the shift been, you know? Where did, the, where, did where I was going take me, you know? It kind of, you know? Um, and one, one answer, one possible answer, and I'm, I'm going to keep working on this, one possible answer is there was a sort of a dissolution of, of, of ego. Now, 
in Freudian terms, and I've had this discussion with other people, some, you know, some in the underworld, some, you know, dusty dumpster rodent weasels that like to discuss this kind of stuff while, you know, in the other world, basically hi, uh, which is when I, it's very, very, very difficult for me to, to form sentences, but, uh, but, um, uh, and there was one in particular who I had liked, uh, and I'm going to, I might talk about her a little bit later, even though I, I try not to, you know, but she had given me permission, you know, and she's kind of, she's, she's left that world, uh, you know, I'm not sure exactly what, uh, uh, what uh, world she's in now, but um, she's left a particular, you know, underworld that I've been talking and writing about. And she gave me permission, and she even gave me permission to use her, the, the name she was using at the time. And I have talked about her in much earlier podcasts. I think I called her Lady C. So, uh, but we did have a discussion about Ego, and she was very influenced by a movie, I think it's called Revolver, Jason Stratham, a very weird a kind of heist action film, but there's a whole bunch of, you know, discussion about ego, and there's Deepak Chopra in it, you know, <laughs> uh, but uh, she, um, uh, and she was kind of amazed that, you know, they were saying ego is bad, but it depends, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's what perspective you take from the Eastern perspective, Western perspective, whether you're defining uh, ego in Freudian terms or Jungian terms. In in Freudian terms, the ego is the closest to a mediator. You know, it's necessary. You know, you need the ego because otherwise you'd be overwhelmed by the id and you know, uh, and by the needs, wants, you know, drives, desires, all that stuff, and the prohibitions of the superego. The ego is the one that is also as a you know uh, aware of reality. You know, uh, again. I've, I have actually defined all of these in pre previous podcasts. I'm not going to go through it here. But uh, in uh, Freudian um, uh, terms, the ego is absolutely necessary. You know, um, it, it's the closest thing to uh, a mediator. Whereas in Jungian theory, the ego is the center for the first 30 or so years of life, 32, 33 years, first half of life. And then it shifts because, you know, then the center... You, you work on actualizing a self, you know, the self. And that's where you start making the unconscious conscious, the confronting of the shadow, uh, the, you know, um, uh, unveiling of the persona, the confronting of the anima animus uh, and all of that stuff. And then you uh, may or may not uh, develop into a self or individuate into a self, you know. And again, I'm giving the simplest version here, you know. So, uh, but in Eastern... And there was a guy who I never liked, and I think it came up when I was partying with that with with the person that I talked about, you know. And I think we were, you know, doing some substances, and some other people came, and and one of them was a big fan of Eckhart Tolle, who I really don't like. But uh, Tolle was talking about how the enemy, I think, is thought, and 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 from his perspective, I think ego is a bad thing because you have to you have to dissolve the ego. Um, to become to become aware and to move to that and, and, and the next step and we could also talk about the, uh, the 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 chakras and kundalini all kinds of things you know however just for purposes here um, I, one way of looking at what has happened to me is and I don't really you know how anti organized religion I am but it's sort of it could be seen it could be if you're if you if you're that way inclined as some kind of uh, you know uh, the drugs and the other stuff took me to a sort of a mystical state, you know, <laughs> took me to, you know, yeah, Campbell's return of the hero after the, uh, you know, the dark cave and all that stuff, returning to the old world with the boon, is this, you know, different state of consciousness, you know, which, and it was also, all of this discussion reminded me of Carlos Castaneda's, or Castaneda, he was a writer from the, you know, 60s and 70s. I think he died in something like 1998. And he was an, originally an anthropologist. He was doing, I think, a PhD. And then he wrote a series of books. Um, called, I think the first was The Teachings of Don Juan. And it was supposedly his uh, apprenticeship with a, you know, uh, Mexican, South American sorcerer, shaman, actually shaman, you know. And the first, you know, forays into the, you know, other world or the, you know, um, the alternate realities were 
you know, I think masculine neurother drug induced. And then he got to the point, supposedly, so this is all supposed. He all supposedly got to the point where he could just shift. And I remember reading the books, and in one of them, he was like going, you know, the, and I, at the time I thought this was very bizarre, but he was like going, when they got to a certain point, the 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 shaman his guide rather than give him uh, you know uh, a hallucinogen or a drug or whatever uh, possibly even you know ayahuasca which has now become very famous for that type of thing but uh, uh, rather than give him a drug to just like you know in terms of the chakras and you got the energy levels you know up and down the body you know so uh, a kind of a version of that was if you uh, if you do etc. <coughs> Kind of a hit at that chakra with a, he, the, the the shaman would kind of go whoop, and then it would like shift him into it. And at the point of time, I'm like, what? You know, it's like, uh, uh, but but now people do meditate. I don't know, but the the the, the shifting by you know uh, by hitting into that chakra. I, I don't know if he was, what that was about, but uh, whether you know. But now at the when they were first. Published, they were published as uh, nonfiction. That he really met this sh uh, shaman and he went on these journeys and uh, alternate realities, and then he had attracted some followers. But now they say it was fiction. He didn't really meet the shamans, or he may have, he may not have. And some of it was fictionalized, so that's that whole thing, you know. But what? How much of it is uh, real? How much of it? But he did die, and he was claiming that he was going to go to an alternate reality, and after that. Two of his followers, they died under sort of mysterious circumstances in the desert. You know, so there's kind of some kind of bizarre stuff going on there. I don't know, no, 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 not the kind of thing I'm talking about. But what I'm talking about is, yeah, uh, the reason I thought of that was that it was sort of his journeys, his version of it into, um, uh, you know, at first. You know, uh, drug, uh, drug induced or substance induced, or, and then he was kind of in that state, and he could get to that state without the. So, and that's sort of the goal. And you know, I don't want to say that I, the state I'm in mean now is some kind of mystical state because I don't like that kind of shit. That's not my shit, you know. I'm not, <laughs> it's, a, uh, it's not, it's not really what I'm into. But it's a, I'm just a way of framework, a way of looking at it. So the dissolution of ego. But uh, see, that's what I was talking about the chakras. But if you look at, you know, the, the top chakra, the crown chakra, you know, it's, it's, it's supposedly, in a way, it's unattainable because you can't be here and there at the same time, you know. Uh, you can't, the living in the world and living not in the world, the awareness of, you know. So in a way, I'm dealing with some pretty heavy issues here, you know. And I call it, you know, kind of lightly, uh, you know, the, the whole going from nutty to crazy. That's good, you know. But I'm not. I'm not out of touch with reality. That's the whole thing. I'm, I'm not out of touch with reality. And at the point, I'm still doing the things that need to be done. I'm going out to, you know, get shopping and get cat food and looking after my kids and talking to my friends. And I'm taking the uh, the, uh, the babies for their uh, wellness checkup tomorrow. And I'm, you know, I'm looking into the house situation and I'm aware of all of that. And I'm not need for now. And hopefully it's going to last, but who knows. But uh, for now, I don't need the drugs, because I'm in a different state of awareness, you know? So, and that kind of does overlap with uh, Campbell's Return of the Hero, you know, which I'll come back to. So, again, this may or may not make sense. You may you may be saying, if anybody's actually listening to this shit, you know, you may be saying he really has lost it, you know? But, uh, but for me, this is just a free, this is yet another framework. Now, as my friend says, you know, long term, you know, uh, is it sustainable? Will it keep me out of that other world? Because that other world took me to a certain prop. Uh, the way I'm looking at it now is that other that path, uh, maybe a societally unacceptable path because it was you know dealing with pretty extreme <laughs> circumstances. But those extreme circumstances are what brought me here. There are probably better ways. I would advise if you want to come here, there are better ways to come here. But I didn't really want to come here. <laughs> <laughs> it was the other world that pulled me, pulled me, pulled me. There was I recover was that was the path that uh, that the, and the pools. So now I'm looking at it in terms the pools were to bring me here. Now why I'm not sure because you know <laughs> oh, well it's, it's a progression. It's a progression. It's, it's, you know, it's a it's a different. It's a sort of a. I'm not saying I don't like higher lower. 
I don't like higher power, lower power. I don't like higher level of consciousness, lower level of consciousness, awareness. I don't like any of that shit. I don't like it. I don't like this shit. But, you know, I'm just trying to, just trying to, and it's very difficult to, again, articulate and talk about and, you know, and try to, you know, and it, you know, and not sound as if you were, and that's what I don't like people who say, who say I'm a higher level of consciousness than anyone else and I'm aware and I'm, I've done this and I've achieved this and I'm, you know, pompous assholes and I've met quite a few. <laughs> so, so, um, yeah, so what I'm saying is I'm just a uh, nutty professor exploring uh, different options while considering, you know, the shift from nutty to crazy and dealing with, you know, the so-called addiction or whatever it was, you know, whatever it is, you know, that uh, just sort of brought me here wherever I am. So that's what these things are going to be about now. That's what the writing is. And then the writing is also the stories. It's more detail, and it's stories about the other people that I've met in the underworld who are, who are, you know, there's different, there's, everybody has different reasons to be there, you know, <laughs> and different ways of getting there, and different things that are pulled. Everybody's, you know, and there's some very, very dark stories and sad stories, you know. Uh, so anyway, uh, for now, I'm just going to edit and post. We'll see how much of this we can put into one, uh, you know. And so I'm just rambling incoherently. If you stumbled onto this, and maybe I'll start with a little thing. I'll, I'll do a little introduction, which I haven't done with the other ones. So anyway, from the four of us. So from Agita, from the uh, two babies, we get one baby there, and we get one baby very comfortably camouflaging himself and there. And we get a daddy here. And after this, I'm just going to, you know, uh, watch some Netflix and have some ticket food. And tomorrow, um, taking the uh, the boys for their uh, vet checkup. And I, I will probably tape on that too. So anyway, bye for now.